Hello. It's showtime. Showtime. <laughs> hey, everybody. Good evening. Good evening to you all. It is Thursday evening and 7 central, and we're good and ready to go. Okay, that little thing comes up automatically. We didn't actually put that up there. Oh, no. The star thing. It does. It goes up automatically. Hello. Let's just say hello to everybody before we begin tonight. Linda, have you gotten out of bed yet? Because we're supposed to wake you up. And it's nap time. But it's not nap time now. It's time with us. It's time with us, your friends tonight. Um, hey, Diana, how are you tonight? And hello, everybody. We always know that Jesse and Lisa are going to come. Oops. I think I better turn my phone down. So... We're just going to wait for a couple. Oh, people are starting to stream in now. I uh, hope that everybody's doing well. Hey, Jerry from Butler Family Farm. We're going to keep on top of this tonight because usually we let our comments get out of hand. And uh, tonight we're going to. Hey, Tracy. I think you do a good job. Honey. TNT Adventures. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So tonight we actually have guests tonight. And. They're not in yet, but we're expecting them at any moment. Um, they're probably really busy. I know that they're getting ready for their soil expo and um, they've been so kind as to join us tonight. So we'll give them just a few minutes and maybe catch up with you and see how everybody is tonight. It's Easter weekend, isn't it? So if there's any Easter egg hunts planned, anything like that, I used to love that as a kid. Um, I remember when my little boys went on an Easter, they're, I think their only Easter egg hunt ever. My brother-in-law went around hiding eggs and it was the cutest thing you've ever seen. Little identical twin boys with their little baskets walking. <laughs> it was so cute. Oh my goodness. I loved it. And I don't like the fact that those moments are forever gone, forever gone. But um, what, what's this? Anything important? No. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Um, oh, are you going to be there, Jerry? You're going to be at the Soil Family Expo, which is April 5th to 7th. I'm amazed Wait, that there is. I'm in. Oh, oh, this is this is the moment that, you know what, like when kids are naughty and stuff, if there's something happening, it seems as though they act up right when you're busy with something. Right. And that's exactly what happens to Opal every single time we get on a live and here she comes yes <laughs> um yeah anyways well i tried to wake up linda but i'm not sure how to do that um easter egg hunts are fun hey sean how are you tonight nice to see you in here hey treasure hunter neil saw you earlier this week on a live how are you doing um anyway so that's what opal does every single time we have a live she does this and it's like it's really urgent and she gets really antsy and then she doesn't do anything at all. No, no, honey. Over there. Lay down. Oh, my word. You can't tag today. That's okay. No problem at all. Thank you. You're probably on a phone, right? So we are just waiting for our guests. They should be arriving. Haven't come in yet. Um, we just checked to see if we've gotten any kind of a notification from them and we haven't. So... I think it'll be any second. I'm sure of it. They'll just pop up any moment. So good day. Good day. How are you? <laughs> I always like experimenting with that one. You like me to text her? Sure, Jerry. You can do that if you'd like. Yeah, because Linda wanted to be on and I, I'd feel really bad. Good Friday there. Oh, so you, you aren't working today. So that works out really nicely then. You can join. Hello, Maureen Washington. How are you tonight? Good to see you guys. It's been a busy week. It has been a busy week. And you know what? Now we that I talked I've... about her last week. Hey, Rushing. Did we? Yeah. Remember, you're, you're maybe going to see if you can take her up on her sourdough. Oh, yes. Stuff. Yeah, that's true. I remember that. Love your good eye. Good eye, Mike. Does that sound authentic? <laughs> this is, this is like... my good eye, and that's my bad eye. Oh dear. Okay. No. Yeah, no, probably, probably no. true. Probably true. Nothing. Um, Nothing. No, nada. nobody. No. Okay. 
So, oh my word. Diana, happy Easter by a chocolate bunny or jelly beans. Diana, thank you so much. Look at Diana just, just sent us a $5. Diana, that is so sweet of you. And here, I love getting the little treats like that. It's just so exciting. Like the first time we ever got stars, which was Diana again. And you know what? It's not even like, it's just, we feel like we've arrived and that happens. Like it's silly. I know, but we just kind of feel like, you know, we're kind of part of things when, you know, we get like that little moment of mention. So thank you, Diana. You are so sweet. You always are so supportive of us. Um, so tonight we've been waiting for our guests. We're so excited to see oh. Sherry and Bobby from Black's Tropical Homestead. Hi guys. Hey, oh. how's it going? Hello. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so excited to have you on here tonight. Have you had a busy day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see, like <laughs> the weather start warming up, every day is busy. busy. Oh, okay. So what does a typical day look for you? Because I we've just been watching videos. We've been watching shorts. We've been getting all acquainted with your stuff even more. Ryan's just been spending time. Um, what does your typical day look like? Well, mine usually start about 4 a.m. I get up. Uh, I go to work. <laughs> uh, come home. Play around in the yard a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go to the gym come back and play in the yard some more. <laughs> <laughs> That's his typical day. Mine, my day start at four with his. I get up and fix his lunch and see him off to work. And then um, my day normally gets started around six or seven where I'm feeding the dogs, chickens, rabbit, taking care of the quail, um, wow. getting dinner ready. I try to have like most of my stuff done by 10 a.m. or so, so I want to cook dinner and know what I'm doing all day, but then I'm mainly filming and keeping up with social media, running errands, Would playing you, in the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you guys are so inspiring. Like, I remember the first time I ever saw you, and I just thought, oh, my word, I'd love to talk with these people because you have so much experience. You guys have 1,309 videos on your channel. Like, <laughs> we, we literally yeah. just got a hundred so we're like <laughs> we were like in the know and you know we got a hundred videos so now you can talk to us about things no like we don't have a clue still but we're <laughs> 1309 videos and you guys have 1.8 million views so yeah. that that is so big and you guys your channel's been going three years at the end of july is that right it's yeah. a baby channel and you almost have 2 million views. That's amazing. That's like tip my hat if I was wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> We've been pretty busy. We've been pretty busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, as, you, as you know, it takes, a, it takes a lot of time to actually do that much content. It's, I don't know how you do it. I really don't. Like, and what, how did you start with this? What's a little bit of your story? Because I would love to hear it if you're, if you're okay with sharing. Yeah, we mainly started YouTube because most of my family is in Virginia. I am originally, I was born and raised in Virginia. I moved to Savannah. And um, once I met Bobby and we purchased this house, I knew he was a gardener and loved to grow things and especially bananas. But once I got into gardening, um, we wanted to be able to share it with our family. So we decided, oh, we can just put the video on, on YouTube. That way we won't have to keep trying to figure out who couldn't get this file or it's too big. Or <laughs> And we didn't know that YouTube was actually a thing um, where people hang out and get to know each other. We yeah. thought it was just somewhere people go to learn the how-tos. So that's how we got started on social media. Yeah, it was during the pandemic. Um so we weren't going nowhere. We weren't mm -hmm. allowing people to come too much around us too much either. So um, yeah. she got into this thing and it's way off from what she used to. Yeah. So she wanted to, she wanted to show her family and her friends, you know, hey, look what I'm doing. Yeah. And I'm raising chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. With all of this, you know, I'm so new to this 
um, lifestyle. Just in the last three years, I have started gardening because I'm terrified of um, bugs <laughs> and snakes and lizards and all that stuff. But what made us want to start homesteading is, you know, seeing what's going on in the world. We want to make sure if anything happened, we are covered. We have these simple skills. They simple. We just have to learn them. But um, we also watched a friend make it to 108 years. And as healthy as she was, you know, what were some of the things she would did to see that she would be so healthy and she lived off the land. She took care of the land and she lived off the land. So that encouraged us to look at life a little different because we don't know what God has in store for us and take care of ourselves better. Yeah, we just started wanting to grow a little something. And this homesteading thing just came about. Yeah, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> it should be, but it wasn't. It, be. it just kind of steamrolled yeah. into you know. The more we did, the more we learned, yep. and the more we want to do, and yep. it just kept on. And we fell in love with it. So we want to share that love with everybody else. Wow. Okay. So because it seems to me that you're experts. Like yeah. we're like in awe going, oh, Sherry and Bobby know everything. <laughs> Let's go and see. <laughs> but this just came about because of the pandemic. And same with us, our story, same exact thing. We just wanted to share it with the family. And it was the best way because we've got family all over the world. Yeah. Um, and like thinking about it, it kind of made us realize that the rug could be pulled out from under us at any time. Oh, like you exactly. just never know. And yeah. so it was best to have a plan and mm -hmm. that's amazing and so in that short period of time 309 videos who does your 1309 1309 videos yeah. that's what i said 1309 and who does your editing do, do you just you do after yeah. work <laughs> that's a job <laughs> yeah. sometimes i fall asleep doing it no, no. I'm like, <laughs> so it's, it's a whole thing um we, we actually had to get into the mindset of doing it. You know, um, at first. It was scary. We were, yeah, it was scary. <laughs> but then, you know, we had to like, oh, we should have filmed that. Yeah, yeah. And now it's kind of like, if we're going to do it, let's film. You yeah, know? yeah. So it, it became a whole thing. We didn't even want to film in front of each other at one no, time. No, yeah. <laughs> no. I was always, I remember when we did one of our chicken videos. And he kept saying, nope, you said this wrong. You got to say that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I called it a, a leg horn? And I was supposed to say, I, what did I say? He like, you called it a leg horn. It's an ice of brown. Okay. And then I'm freaking <laughs> out because of chicken pooping on me. And I'm just like, I don't know what I said. And I, just whatever, just go with it. But yeah. I was embarrassed to film in front of him. Yeah, and he yeah. was the same way. Yeah, now now it's exciting because we'll be in public and we just bust out into a film. <laughs> and, and, and people bust are like, up, saw your brothers, everybody like. <laughs> <laughs> Even our friends and family, when we do that, they'll look at us and then smile like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I think they kind of weird. Yeah. You guys are naturals. You are absolute naturals, and it's such a joy to watch you. So you're you're on a lot. It's amazing, and um, I think that that's what you have to do. You know, get your stuff. And it, you're right. It becomes just something that you do now. Like mm -hmm. I, I can't even trust myself driving down the road anymore because I'm going to do a live. You know, it's, it's the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> we treat this as a full-time job you know yeah. it was once we found out that content creating is a thing we were like either we gonna do this or we not so yeah. we actually yeah. treat it as a full-time job we do spend about eight to ten hours seven days a week um yeah. between filming editing and planning. um <laughs> yeah planning posting scheduling things and you know, it's about eight to 10 hours every day, seven days a week, because if you give content creating a break, it'll yeah. give you a break. So true. You know, we just kind of stay at it. And then we've learned that people look forward to, especially like with Facebook, people look forward to these everyday inspirational quotes. So every time in my mind, I used to say, we can take a break from it today. Sunday, we just going to chill. 
but people look forward to that. And he would say, babe, we gotta, we just gotta give it to him because, you know, with so much going on in the world, um, yeah. we, we need to keep that inspiration going. Yeah, people who know our story knows that um, me and Sherry got different scrimps. Generally her scrimps are not so much mine and vice versa. So, you know, while I'm enthusiastic and I want to go after it, I kind of would be like, yeah, maybe not today. Yeah. <laughs> she goes in 100%. When she get interested in something, it's over. It, it's, it's a, it's it's a wrap. It's <laughs> my, brain, my brain don't work to the point where they'll tell me no. My brain yeah. is like, what? And you can do this? Full speed ahead. And he just like, oh, well. I was going to sleep in today. No, 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 we need to go. And we don't sleep in. I always say I'm going to sleep in, though, and I don't. But it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. And we just sharing our lifestyle. So it's easy to turn the camera on and not miss anything versus missing things. Because to us, it's boring. Like, who want to see me make bread all the time? Or who want to see him outside digging a hole and yeah. feeding plants? But people love it. Yeah, and... Uh the, the amazing people like yourself that we get to meet. Yes. You know, um, I'm in awe. Like, you, you never will meet such great people what than people that's in this community, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then when you meet them in person, they just as nice as they are. I mean, yeah. it's a blessing all in itself. Yeah. It is. It's such a huge payoff. And, you know, again, we're just business people and I've just sold my company um, a couple of Fridays ago. So I like Sherry, I, I thank you. Um, I feel the same passion for this and yeah. like nothing is going to stop us now. So this is the full time deal. When after our very first video, we we're like, well, we're doing this. Like, that's it now. <laughs> we have to. So yeah. like, where do you stop? Am I going to be like 100 years old rolling around? In a wheelchair, I don't know, but it's just something that we. Well, your friend was 108, you know. Yeah, and she wasn't. I mean, even at 100 years old, she wasn't rolling around in a wheelchair. She was up and walking. <laughs> she didn't stop walking until she was 104. Wow. Um, so that and that's why now we say, you know, watching Sandy grow old. Um, we say we don't know. You know, so we got to yeah. take care of ourselves. So we always on a constant search for why are people so sick or what's going on in the world and what can we do to make our lives better? Because if God see fit for 108 years plus for us, we want to be as healthy as, as she was. And she was healthy and happy, especially when there was a man around. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> like God <laughs> yeah, so. hey, and, and the amazing thing is, guys, I mean, I don't, you know, it might not be the same for everybody, but the fulfillment you get From when health. somebody actually say that you did something to help them yes. in their life. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's you know, so I don't think well, I'm ever. Guys, yeah, you guys are talking about your health message, and, and I wanted to talk about a couple things. One, yeah. I got to talk about castor oil. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You guys are so enthusiastic about castor oil. Would you let our people, our our uh, subscribers, know a little bit about the benefits of castor oil? So a little backstory. Um, what for years I I had a major back injury, 12, 11, 12 years ago, about eleven years ago, and I've been in pain ever since. And I just thought this is life. I'll drag around with this bum back, and it'll be all right. Um. Bobby didn't sleep too well at night. He would be up all night watching TV or listening to a podcast. She think I'd be up all night, but she'd be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> be up all night. And, um, you know, I remember Castor Oil as a little girl drinking it. And I, you, we forgot. Most of us were like, yep, as soon as I'm old enough, I don't want to hear or see anything about Castor Oil. Well, Castor Oil is one of those oils that can heal everything yes yeah, a miracle um so one i one night i said i'm gonna we're gonna put this cast oil in our navel um tonight just to see what it's gonna do i we went on to bed me with my achy back and i'm thinking he'll be up watching tv and he'll be all right and the next morning i woke up and no pain and i was saying wait a minute 
my back's supposed to be hurting. This can't be right. The next day, the same thing. And I asked him, I said, well, how do you feel, you know, after night two with this? He said, well, I sleep real well. And um, I feel like I got enough rest. Like, I feel real alert and energetic. And I said, hmm. Yeah, okay. that's, that's what it did for me. You that, know, um, He doesn't have aches and pains, yeah. really. And I, I, I sleep, but when I wake up, I feel like, I'm still a little groggy, like I still could sleep more. Fog, yeah. And what it did is it it put me in a deeper sleep to where when I woke up I was rested. Yeah, you know, and that was real noticeable. It was like night and day. Yes. So we yeah. would skip from day. rubbing it in your navel. And we just we put three bad drops in the navel and rub it in, rub it around the stomach a little bit, and go to sleep. And if you have any aches when you go to bed, it's generally gonna be gone when you it's wake up. It's weird. So the thing with castor oil is, is one of the strongest um, oils you can use for healing. And it can heal some of everything. Bone spurs, um, fibroids, inflammation. I mean, it can pull so many toxins out of your body. And that's what it's doing is detoxing you and healing you from the inside out. So even things that we don't even know may be brewing inside of us. You know, you use this castor oil and it's going to help heal it over time people have skin issues and i mean everything migraines you name it and this oil is seeping in your body and healing you so we are dedicated to cast the oil because it's natural and um yeah it helps it helps people in our community yes um if somebody would have told me this long time ago. before you know i actually tried this like if i was hearing this from somebody else I'd be like, yeah, all right. Yeah, because right. if it was something that good, everybody would know about it because it'd be all over TV and everybody would know that this stuff does this. But they don't. They don't. And they don't. I mean, some surgeries are not necessary because if you use this stuff right, you can actually prevent Help surgeries. Help yourself, yes. You know? oh, oh, guess what? I've had four spine surgeries and mm. I'm feeling like if I just took castor oil <laughs> and you oh. don't have to drink it, you don't, we do not um, yeah, drink, we drink it. it. We just put it in our navel. Um, we do make like, we do other things. So I, being that we are getting older <laughs> and I want to make sure we take care of ourselves as we age, what does that look like? We already grow and raise as much food as we can. What's next? Um, I suffered with high blood pressure for over 20 years. And no matter how much weight I lost, how I changed my diet, what I did, my blood pressure was, when I say high, it was stroke level high all the time. Three different blood pressure medicines. I was um, maxed out with those. I had medicine for my neuropathy. I was on gabapentin. I was on a muscle relaxer and pain pills. And I got tired of it. And I said, we got to do something different. You know, my husband loved to eat. I love to cook. So deep dive into getting away from the preservatives and chemicals, because I think that's a huge issue. And yeah. I'm going to stop taking my medicine because I'm sick of it. And it's not making me better. So I stopped taking the medicine. We started the cayenne. I mean, the castor oil. We started taking cayenne shots, which is just cayenne powder and water every single day and magnesium and now we are the healthiest we have ever been probably our entire life other than as babies and by the way she stopped taking it without telling me because I, I probably would have been concerned about that so anybody who got me is don't, don't stop, stop. get yeah. with your doctor try to try to work something yeah. out because i didn't even tell my doctor out. i didn't tell him because i knew he would fuss and i didn't tell my doctor because i knew she would fuss so i said I got to keep my mind focused and make sure. So I'm constantly in the kitchen making something. If you want cereal, I'm going to make it. If you want cookies, they're going to be homemade. Um, we raise our own meat. We got herbs. I need to find out what herbs are going to work for us. And finally, the day came for me to go to the doctor. And they were like, do you take this? You take your hydrocortisides? You take that? You take." And I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when she took my blood, when I well, first I weighed and I had lost weight and I'm like, okay, I kind of knew I lost weight. I could feel it. When they took my blood pressure and it was 118 over 88. 
almost fell on the floor. Wow. And my doctor said, your blood pressure is so good. Oh my God. She said, I'm going to back you down off some of your medicine. And that's, I said, okay. And she said, I'm just so excited that it's coming down. And I said, well, I, I stopped taking my medicine. And she said, when did you stop taking your medicine? I said about three weeks ago. And oh. she said, oh my God, Sherry, I'm so, she said, I know what you're doing because I watch you on Facebook. And right now I'm going to discontinue all of your medicine. She said, how does your body feel? What does your back feel like? I told her no back pain, no anything. I am, um, I feel great. I can move around. I'm not dragging myself. And, you know, and I know my husband's health can only be better because we eat the same way now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we love to enjoy a soda every now and then. I'm going to home make his sodas because it's better for us. We can get the benefits from it um, better that way. But when I went to the doctor, it definitely told the story. Yeah. If, um, if you see any of the comments from the people that we have spoken to, man, just to hear their testimonies on that. Man, it feels so good. You know, I'm like, you know, these people get to get off of all these meds, all these pain meds, and and yes. get something that's not gonna harm them. Um, some people may know I was in law enforcement, and I used to have to go to homes where people have passed away, and the amount of medication that they would have on their dresser was ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and a lot of it was, you know, some of it was for an issue, but then them issues had side effects. So there were pills for those too. And they had a bunch and people don't know that kind of, that tears up your liver, having all that stuff passing through your body. So if you can do without some of it, yeah. some of it may be necessary, but if you could do without some of it, I'm sure it'll do a lot for your life, yeah. for your yeah. um, your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, we're, we're believers. We are absolute believers because <laughs> there is so, so actually, and in, I don't know if it's just in Canada, well, in the U.S. too, probably, but so many processed foods, hey? Mm -hmm. So since January 1st, I've really, really taken a huge step back. So I stopped sugar. I stopped, um, well, I, I mean, I eat certain hours of the day and I'm being really careful. And I, I hate to say this, but I do feel so much better. And yet mm. I love sugar so much. I love it. It's the, it's the big vice of my life, but um, it's made such a huge, a huge difference cutting, cutting it out of my life like that. So um, I, I'm so sorry. There's been so many comments going by and I did mm -hmm. want to touch them. Um, there's people who are saying, who, who are these wonderful, wonderful people? So there's yeah. something to you. And um, this is Sherry and Bobby from Black Tropical for a tropical homestead. So, for people that have just come in, they're an amazing couple. Go over to their channel. Jesse's been putting up um, links. And thank you so much to our moderators tonight. Uh, we always have such a great time in here with you and both Facebook and YouTube. So I forgot to say all that. Thank you so much. Um, so you come up with so many amazing things. Like you've made your own mozzarella cheese. I watched that one. I was like, I'm going to do all these things. And then I'll just, <laughs> I am, I'm going to do it. I am. I'm totally committed to do it. <laughs> and I am. I'm yeah. going to do it. She'll just she'll go, hey, Ryan, I, I'm going to make, I want to decorate cakes. I know, dear. No, I do. <laughs> but hey, I do, hey, but I do these things, though, that I say I'm going to do. So <laughs> the fact is we're running out of time. And um, we just got to get it done, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Where do you come up with your ideas and what makes like you wake up and you're like, I'm going to make mozzarella today. And the fact that you, had, Snickers? you hadn't been doing, yeah. Oh, man, the Snickers <laughs> are amazing. <laughs> you, it. you make cheeses, oh, like you do it all. I couldn't believe well, you make Snickers bars. Oh, yes. Yeah. We got to, Melanie, we got to make some Snickers together. They are <laughs> way better than the regular Snickers. <laughs> well, I, well, my husband loved to eat, you know, he's not too little. So, and we got to feed this appetite um and i basically go off things that i know my husband love he yeah. loves pizza you know he loves his snacks i feel like i'm punishing him um when i don't have dessert whether it's a <clears throat> cookies or ice cream or cake or candy bar i always have to have dessert for him so basically is is the things that he loved you know 
not saying that we don't we get away from so much process and chemicals and preservatives but occasionally it's things we just won't you know yeah. homemade things taste different from store bought and sometimes we still go out and get what we want and enjoy it but not as much yeah. as we used to yeah yeah but once you start making that stuff from home at home and it's you see different. how they taste and how long they last mm -hmm. you're gonna ask yourself how in the world are they keeping that on those shelves that long yeah what is in that that make that stay on that shelf that long? Yeah. And then you got to wonder, what is that doing to my body? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and the law may allow them to put a certain amount of that stuff in your foods, but all your foods got it in it. Yeah. And it's not allowed. I mean, your body can't do nothing with all that. Yeah. So now whenever you have some issues, it's preserving it's, that. It's feeding that, <laughs> whatever you got going on. So. You know, yeah. some our genetics are better than others. So yeah. some people will be able to tolerate it a little better. Yeah. But some people just not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I might ask him where where are we from? Um so our name, we can go back and explain our name a little oh, yeah. bit. Black Tropical Homestead. Because people ask us. Yeah. <laughs> so we are Bobby and Sherry Black. Um we started off with growing tropical fruit. My husband loved, he is the dancing banana man. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he loved to grow banana plants, but we grow tropical fruits. What our our first love: bananas, um, pineapple, mango, sour um sour sap, jackfruit. We love tropical fruit. Um, we we live in Savannah, Georgia, so we do push the needle when it comes to what we can grow. But we feel like we can grow anything. We just have to do the work to to make it to help it survive. Yeah, we're not tropical. We're not in a tropical area. We're yeah. in subtropical area. So I do take the work to um, do these things. But I love those fruit. Oh and, my God. you know, you, most people have never tried to be able to eat those fruit unless they go to a tropical area. Yeah. So, and when we go down there and we taste them. Yeah, we like, like, we need yeah, a plant. Yeah, we, <laughs> we need to grow that. <laughs> we don't want more fruit. We just want the whole plant so we can grow our own. Yeah. <laughs> and we fail and, and we succeed, you know, but we learn and we, we keep on at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, did you see Jesse says the more preservatives you eat now prevents the mortician from adding all that embalming fluid later. <laughs> uh oh, so we might be able to save a couple dollars on the back end. Yeah. <laughs> We saved somebody some dollars anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. So the the thing that I was really intrigued with was the ginger. What the ginger that you squeeze and you can put it in your hair? The shampoo Where? ginger. Yeah, mm. we do use That's that. The as worst a, thing ever. You can grow your own soap. Isn't that something? That is the most incredible thing. Does it actually work? Oh, yeah. It does. It it works really yeah. well. Was it Jamaica or, or Hawaii. Hawaii? That's that's what they use. They, they will go in the rivers. They'll get that stuff and you know. Yep. So can you just buy these plants at like? Where do you get things like this? We travel to South Florida. Specialty um, places, you know. Uh, you will okay. find people here and there that have them if you can get to them and. Oh and okay. Yeah. 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 Sour is the best cancer fighting medicine in the world over any medicine ever. Yeah. I'm going to tell you guys, I mean, I knew nothing about herbs. I knew nothing about any of that stuff. And once my wife found out about it, like I tell you, when she, she just goes <laughs> and to try the stuff and see what it do for you. Like a toothache plant. I had a toothache. I was using that. You know, um, and we were growing it and I, I was just like, well, we got a toothache plant outside, and he said, "Well, you need to make a tincture." I mean, mm. we—I know we ain't never had a toothache, but just in case, I made it, and a few months later, he had a toothache, and he was able to just go to the apothecary and get toothache medicine. Yeah, it's natural. And speaking in public, you know, even I was when I got on here when I started, you know, doing YouTube, I get anxiety. I always had it. I. I talked to a doctor one time. I was like, man, oh, what can I do about this anxiety? It's they want to put you on pills. But it's one of those things that it's the biggest issue that most people have yeah. is anxiety. But uh, sour salt leaf, I make a tea out of that. Yep. And, and I can feel my anxiety go down. 
Really? So you in anxiety and you drink that tea, sour it'll sour just tea. stop. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. I make sour sour tea every week. But no, actually, I make go to colon more than sour sour. But mm. both have that same common um, property. But sour sour is great for anxiety and cancer. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What a resource you guys are. Like, we're... Because this is the very first moment I've ever heard of soursop. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't even know what it is. It's actually a fruit, but you can actually, the leaves have so much benefit in itself. So the fruit, I think, is more for the cancer. Well, the fruit has all of the benefits there, but definitely for cancer. Mm -hmm. um, but the leaves have a whole lot of benefits, yes. too. So we grow a tree. I don't think we got it. We ain't got a fruit yet. No, because we won't let it keep a leaf. We, we keep scribbling all the leaves <laughs> out. <laughs> and freeze we dry want it. The tea. Yeah. So wow. it's amazing. Wow. So we got other herbs. Yeah. Goat Days is saying, how do you get it? What, what do you need in order to grow it even? Well, you do need warm. I mean, you can bring it inside. We do bring ours in in the, um, yeah. in the winter, but our winters are very mild. So they don't like cold and they don't like a lot of wind. You're going to have to be willing to, you have to be dedicated because our front room will like <laughs> uh -oh, a nursery in you know, the wintertime. Like we, we had to walk around everything. Yeah. It's big trees. <laughs> <laughs> so I was out get big fast. So it's something you got to be able to move around. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you, I wanted to specifically, this is so interesting and I want to come back to that. But now that it's on my mind, the big ears, the the amazing Elephant leaves ears? that you have with the Mickey Mouse and what, mm -hmm. what are those? Are those just plants that have beautiful big leaves? Yeah. Those actually, they all called Mickey Mouse. Yep. They all yeah. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Um, we got this love for big plants, plants that put out big leaves and yeah. like yeah. we love the banana plant. They put off these huge, and that's what mostly we in the yard like, man. How big is that leaf up there? That's pretty cool. Look at that leaf. <laughs> yeah. So when we see these elephant ears and Mickey Mouse, I mean, it's just this big, pretty, variegated ear, and it's shaped like Mickey Mouse. You know, we had to have it. They are very, very expensive, but um, we had to have it. <laughs> yeah. So you don't eat them or anything. It's just no, pretty no. to look at. Like them. Yeah, it's just for look. We do have... One elephant ear that is edible, the edo, mm. the edo is edible. But we keep that in a pot, and I love it. It's better than eating a potato, and I love potatoes. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. So, okay, so do you have chickens on your homestead? We do. Actually, you can hear the quail in the background. We have, we raise our quail in, indoor. Yeah. Um for a little while, they go uh, outside. Look, wow. too. <laughs> yeah, they, they they can go outside, but um, they're a little spoiled. But we do have chicken, quail, and rabbit. Rabbit is our main source of meat. Oh, rabbit is your main source of meat. Yes. And so you're you're in Savannah, mm -hmm. and are you able to have chickens? Are you an urban homestead or out in the country? We in the suburbs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One acre suburban homestead. Our neighbors, we can stand in our front yard and talk to all of our neighbors in the front, on the sides. Um, but we do have chickens. We have chickens for eggs. We used to raise chickens for meat, but um, it costs so much and we lose chickens. Now we just raise rabbit for meat. Okay. Okay. So, but you eat like eggs from your chickens and that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And then the bees, the bees. I love that first video. That was so well done. <laughs> Are you still doing the bees? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. We That's love for the rest of our bees. life. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness, because you got such a big haul. I could not believe how much honey. How long would that have taken for those bees to make that honey? Mm, they they don't only take took a few yeah. months. Um, yeah, they don't take very long. We got them in October. So maybe wow. six, seven months. Um, we were already harvesting our first load of honey. Well, yeah, that wow. was in the wintertime. But we actually from, I think they started in February mm -hmm. to then we got May. We got our first May, harvest. Yeah, and we harvested first. Yeah. And then we got one or two. We should have got three more. Yeah. But we left so much honey on the hive, which was a bad idea looking back at it. But 
yeah, we left a lot of honey. We got about 300 pounds of honey out of the hives, and we left about 100 pounds in just so they can get through the winter. We did it, need it. It was too much. <laughs> 300 pounds of honey you got. So you can, you can like sell your honey. Can't we you? are completely, we have been sold out for months. Soon as we say honey for sale, it's over. Oh <laughs> it's my over. word. That is amazing. I have to have honeybees. I have yes. to. Yes. You do. They are very entertaining little people. <laughs> <laughs> we call them the girls, but they are very entertaining. Like for hours, I used to always say my neighbors probably think something wrong with us because we always walking around the yard, but we'll stand and stare at the bees for a long time. And most of them know now, but I know they used to say, what are they doing? They are so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it's so neat. Sherry, you're such an inspiration and you take such wonderful care of Bobby and you make me look so bad. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Because you know, I literally make him make his own food and everything. I mean, you're like, Bobby, you're so well taken care of, eh? He is pretty yes, spoiled. Yes. He is pretty spoiled. <laughs> but, you know, we tell people, like, I, I will share our life. We basically share our life and I talk about how we live and um and things we do like I don't know what the bills look like, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know what the bills look like. I've never paid the bills. I've never. I don't even see the bills. He take care of that. Um, when it come to putting gas or maintaining vehicles, he cut the grass. You know. So yeah. I don't know what this look like. So, in return, he shouldn't have to cook, clean, wash clothes. You know, I do what I can do at home. So when he yeah. come home, he don't have to worry about it. We work the yard pretty much together, and that worked for us. And I've had people tell me, girl, you do all that cooking, and then you got to fix his plate too? Yeah, I'm going to fix his plate, and I'm going to take his plate and wash it because I don't want him washing my dishes. But yeah, that's yeah. what worked for us. That's right. You know, and it may not work for everybody else. but yeah. Nobody should, you know, try to be somebody else yeah. you know what works for y'all should only you know should be for y'all yep and nobody yep. should be trying to disparage what somebody else got going on either so that's right yeah Aww. so whatever y'all however y'all live you know what worked for y'all that's what's important mm -hmm. yeah. you know you can sit and say oh wow that's nice they do that but hey, it's not for me <laughs> well, you got a good thing going on that's for sure yeah you really do the both of you are such a wonderful couple together and so you can just see the teamwork there which i love um and i think that that's obviously probably why so many people love you um, and then you guys have arranged a soil expo and you've got, is this the second year now that you've done that and that you've got, can you tell us a little bit about that? We would love to go. <laughs> this is our third annual soil family expo coming up next weekend yeah. on April 5th through April 7th in Savannah, Georgia. That started off um, three years ago as a meeting around the fountain, just with some Georgia people, just so we can know each other because we live close by but we had people like andel and cali homestead with pooh bear and lion crest and from all over texas california north carolina virginia they were like oh no we are coming too yeah <laughs> so it went from just a little local meeting around the fountain to um i think the first year it was 40 something people here mm -hmm. um and the second year it was around 600 the city said they stopped counting around 600 people wow. down the plaza. Oh my goodness. And so, so that was the second year. So now this is the third year. This is the third year, and we don't know what to expect, but we know a lot of people are coming. People will start um, arriving into Savannah on Monday morning. And, um, you know, it's just to us, we try to make Soil Family Expo different from all the other expos and, and events because we need each other. We need to know each other. You know, we learn from each other and we need to have each other back, but it's it's easier to have each other back when you have that personal connection. Yeah. Um, so we, we come together and we hang out a lot. It's not necessarily about 
teaching them how to slaughter a pig or how to bake bread. We can talk about these things, but it's more so to sit down and have a meal together and get to know each other and talk to each other. But we do spend time at the Savannah Children's Museum on April 6th so we can teach men, women, and children and encourage them to grow and raise their own food and what they can do with it. And it's amazing how many people actually needed this. Yes. You know, um, depending on where you're from, where you're at, you may be the only person around that actually enjoy growing or, you know, homesteading or anything. So everybody else probably take you a little weird, you know. <laughs> but when you get around a whole bunch of like-minded people, yeah. and, you know, yeah. it's just it's a all, whole different thing. Yeah, we know? all weird together. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the crazy thing is when people actually see us, and and they get around us, they realize we just normal people. We just regular everyday people. So why can't I do this? Why can't I grow stuff? You know, let's see what's so exciting yeah. and why they so interested in this stuff. Yeah. You know, this has been three years of full speed ahead learning, and every, we we will never stop learning. Even Sandy at one hundred and seven was still learning things. So we'll never stop learning. Um, so while we're here, we need to learn the things that are important, how to take care of ourselves, how to take care of each other, and what else? Because every time you blink your eyes, mm -hmm. it's something new. So you want to make sure you have your back and, and have a game plan because things can get ugly quick. Oh, isn't that the truth? And you just never know. You could go to bed tonight and tomorrow could be a new world, right? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. I remember when it already we, happened one time. I remember yeah. when we, yeah. um, we brought Sandy home from the assistant living. And I told Bobby, I said, we bring her home for about two weeks because they were shutting down all the nursing homes and no visitors. I said, How, like, we ain't going to be able to sleep not knowing what's going on with her. And she can't really tell you anything. So he said, well, let's bring her home for two weeks to keep an eye on her. We can take care of her better at home. We didn't know it would be basically it was the rest of her life. But we were able to still give her a chance at living and not being locked down and not see the people that, you know, she was familiar with. But, um, man, that well, we didn't see that coming. We didn't see it coming. But all that was a blessing because we got to go. To where she lived and see how she lived. I mean, on an island where you know, basically she had to survive off, off of the world island. around there. Yep. She had a boat that she could take off, and if she needed to go get some stuff, you know, she could. But basically, yeah. she lived off of what was around her, yeah. and um, it was that, amazing. That puts you in that. a whole different mindset. Yeah, now, we can't do that. We don't have that ability. <laughs> But, but just to see it, like yeah, most people, it, it's inspiring. I, I say that was God showing us. He was he was showing us things that we didn't even see. Like Sandy yeah. would call me somebody, this lady named Queenie. Okay. And I'm like, I don't look nothing like Queenie. Why does she keep calling me Queenie? And they said, Queenie is the highest compliment you would ever get from Sandy. She Aww. would call her Parky. They said that these two people, Queenie and Parky, are like, the her life and I said I don't understand I know I'm a black woman but I don't look like Queenie that lady was old and she oh. had great hair I said we don't look alike but it was something else that she saw so yeah. I was to her Alan which brought me to find you all um it taught us that okay you can live off of a certain amount of space you can do a whole lot and to see her see 108 um it was a blessing to have her in our life and to encourage us to do better. You know, you don't, you don't need the way of the world to be able to, to live and survive. God already took care of that. So I think he was showing us that I'm going to take you over to this Island and let y'all spend time over here and see what life is like on a secluded Island. And you can only get here by boat. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they actually, <laughs> they told us we could, we could spend a night out there. No, thank you. Uh, there's no <laughs> like, It's dark. Like, you can't see your hand. Like, oh, no. no. The ghost stories. <laughs> yeah, the, the ghost, ghost stories. stories yeah. So, and Dale told me, oh, my God, is this channel called My Wild Home? They remind me so much of Sandy's story. And I'm like, really? She said, yeah, they bought an island. And they building a barge to take their stuff over. And I'm like, 
What? <laughs> There's no way. Like, I wonder if they know Sandy. So when I came and looked, it was just the same story. You know, she something. they built this Allen up. They even though they have a twenty thousand square foot home there, but animals, you know, 29,000 acres surrounded by water is, is beautiful. It's amazing. So, I, I don't know that story, though. I mean, yeah, what inspired y'all, what inspired y'all have to tell us. What inspired you? What, is, what inspired you? What inspired you? Um, okay, so when you were telling your story about what inspired you, that's literally our story. Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, we were in the States, all of a sudden this weird thing was happening. We flew back, left our car in the airport for, it's still there four years later. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And everything changed. We came back to Canada and we weren't allowed to leave. We were not allowed to go anywhere. We couldn't even Mm -hmm. cross provinces at some point. So it was such a lockdown. It was so much control. And we were like, oh, and I know we can't, you know, we have to stay quiet, which I'm not good at. But I'm just saying that when I realized how our freedoms could be taken, I thought this is not going to happen on my watch. Like, Mm -hmm. no way. So we decided to just look for a place that we would be able to go and feel safe and make our own rules for a large part. Um, And that's when this this island came up for sale. And I like, oh, you want some... The quail going crazy on the door. Oh, really? <laughs> um, so we just put in an offer, and um, that's that's kind of how it all started. And um, then we we weren't able to see it, so we had to like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We didn't. We actually couldn't see it. It was it was frozen. It was winter. We couldn't get up to see it. It's twelve and a half hours away. Um, mm. and so by the time we got there, I don't know if you've seen our first videos, but we actually, I had to ax through the ice in the boat at the front of the boat, hanging out, trying to get the boat back. Yeah. Um, and then we got on the shore and we're like, we're home. Like, this is, this is it. Like, this is the most beautiful place on earth. And so I, I also think that it was a God thing. Oh, for sure. You know, that it was, um, just such a gift. And now Oh, it's a dream to be there. We're building, we're doing all the things that we've dreamt of and learning, making mistakes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Trying to do better the next time. And uh, we're just having the time of our life. And watching a lot of Black's Tropical Homestead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did, y'all, did, did y'all grow up in their life or y'all just, this, y'all city people and just sat to live? Yeah. Well, we are city people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We don't know anything about this? We're just winging it and learning as okay. we go. That's the best way to learn. Yeah. I think that's society. Yeah. Exactly. So very, very much that way, and really much, much happier in the country. I mean, we, you know, I owned a recruitment firm for twenty-eight plus years, so um, I was very business oriented, and you know, wore my suit and my matching purses and shoes and dressed up every day for many, many years. Now this is me, but like this feels like home right. and I'm so comfortable with it and I love it so much. And I've never baked a loaf of bread. I've never done any of these things, but they're happening. Three of those things I promise are happening this summer. So, and I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nothing like homemade bread because did you start, I know you got your sourdough started. Have you started yet? So we haven't started it yet. I still have my stuff. Um, I'm going to learn from a friend here and then also Maureen Washington, um, about an hour and a half away. She has said that she would teach me. So I'm not sure how that's all learned. My daughter has Willow Place Farm on Instagram. Um, They have a farm in Ohio. She has a 150-year-old sourdough starter. Mother dough. Mother dough, dough, yeah. So she's like, you know, maybe... I don't know. Does, is that a good thing to have an old piece of bread like that? Like I think so. I think what? the old, you know, everything older is better. Like going back to the old ways. So yeah, it's got lots of flavor if it's old like that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we, 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 I, I saw those. <laughs> I said, look, we are terrible. People <laughs> always say, "Can you give us some sourdough recipes?" And I'm like, 
I don't know nothing about sour though. I cannot keep it alive. We both try to grow it. I, we do so much that we forget about it. Yeah. yeah you want to feed it every so often. Yeah. And we just it just sit up there to, like I think I saw them growing some green stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't fed it in a week or two. The last was, one, I was like, the one he started, I was like, what is all this green stuff? I just threw the whole jar in the trash. I was like, I'm scared to even open that. So <laughs> let's just do it again. <laughs> yeah, if you're not careful, it can end up being a bad science experiment for sure. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. To me, to, you have to, um, so you keep it in a jar and then it can actually get moldy and stuff? Well, something we doing wrong. Yeah. Because um, it's only like day three or something. I think, yeah, I think if, if you don't tend to it in the beginning, yeah, while it's still trying to become what it needs to be, it'll, it'll go bad. And yeah. We wow. have so many little projects going on everywhere. <laughs> that one that's sitting over there, that corner, just got forgotten about. Yes. yes. <laughs> and they keep getting forgotten about. Yeah, like we got a whole fermentation counter where I ferment like our kombucha, our sodas, but then I keep like jars over there just because it's convenient. But I think we got like a 20 pound kombucha hotel over there. It's wild. So things can get lost. Wait. I like your apothecary. What kind of things do you have in that? You have this great big hutch and it's just full stacked of shelves of all kinds of interesting medicines. What's in there? So we have Oops. some of everything in there. We got um blue butterfly pea, mints, lemongrass, chocolate tea, Gota Cola, moringa, stevia. Moringa. Nice. Yeah. We got some of everything there. Two fake plant, um, Golden Black rod, seed, golden yeah. rod. We got tinctures. We got, yeah. got salves, um, cayenne pepper. So anything that we grow, we do check to see if it has any medicinal properties. And if it do, we'll freeze dry some and put it in the apothecary for long haul. So this is the second time you mentioned cayenne pepper. What's that good for? I, I really don't know. I'm a total new. That's my blood pressure medicine, but wow. it also contribute to um, inflammation. It gives you energy, help you lose weight. It can cure a stomach also. It can stop a bleed. It can stop a heart attack. So yeah. cayenne pepper. And all we do is take about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper that we grow. And I, I um, grind it up to powder. I put a little bit in a shot glass and a little bit of water and that's our cayenne shot. That's Ooh. your blood pressure medicine. That's your Energy drink that should, like I said, stop bleed, cure an ulcer, stop a heart attack, um, so many things. Missing with cast all, put it on your feet. And <laughs> yep, it's good for neuropathy. Mm -hmm. um, but cayenne, those are the three things we take. Cayenne, castor oil, and magnesium every single day. Oh, I was going to ask, mag magnesium, magnesium chloride, right? You, you, you're like, when you do something, you do it big. You've got the great big bag of magnesium. And yeah. I was wondering, what is that for? Headaches or something? Um, so the magnesium is good for everything. Headaches, um, energy. Most of us are. I can almost guarantee you, everybody in the chat, including the four of us sitting here, are probably deficient in magnesium. Um, and it's just pretty normal. That's where your fatigue come in, your low blood pressure, or sometimes high blood pressure, um, diabetes, different illnesses come in, muscle spasms, headaches. It's because we are deficient in magnesium, neuropathy, but... The first thing the doctor tell you is, oh, let me prescribe you some right. magnesium or whatever. Right, I right. just buy a six pound, five pound bag of magnesium chloride flakes. We spray ourselves every day with these magnesium chloride flakes. And it it's a dosage. We spray ourselves 30 to 40 times a day. And that equals one dosage of what we would have to swallow. But if my husband catch a cramp, he know to get the magnesium spray. He'll spray himself. The cramp will instantly go away. So it's just the flakes dissolved in what water? Water. Oil? Okay, water. Okay. Distilled, water. Distilled water. Yeah. Okay. Distilled water. Mm -hmm. And then your book. I did not want to leave without. Thank you, Diana, again for mentioning. You've got a book. Who? Yeah. Yes. Got one coming out. <laughs> <laughs> that was. My a goodness. Yeah. So I we were. Somebody that. asked us about writing a book, and we were just like, "How you do that?" Like. Yeah. How do you write a book? 
So um, we had an we have an awesome publisher, and she coached us through how to write um, this book because we had no clue of what to do. So we had an awesome team that helped us put our book together, and it'll be out in a few weeks. We'll have a release date soon, but. Congratulations! That is so exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited for you too. Look at yeah, you. It was so funny. Bobby was doing all the writing because he's a good writer. And I was like, I'm gonna just leave him alone. I will fix his breakfast and bring it in here and give him his breakfast while he writing a book. And he finally said, All you have to do is list all of your herbs, all of the homemade cleaning yeah. products that you and I said, Okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting here typing and writing, and I'm like, hey. This book ain't done. He said, what? I said, you only wrote like 9,000 words. We need 30,000 more words. I was like, uh -huh. how do you know? <laughs> I was like, buddy, we got some more right to do. Oh, uh, babe, um, I don't know. <laughs> he was like, I told my whole life story in 9,000 words. I was like, well, you left out a lot. So. That's huge. And this book is coming out when? Um, it'll be out probably in about three weeks. And what's um, the we name were of trying that? To, we were trying to get it out for Soil Family Expo, but our publisher, um, she had a death in the family, so we told her to take your time and deal with that. We are here, and it's okay, you know. So yeah. she yeah. was hurt because we couldn't get it out by next weekend. But I told her, you know, she got to take care of her and her family. Aw, wow, that's incredible. So what's the title? Well, maybe it's the surprise title. Oh, okay. actually, it's called Adventures in Homesteading. Oh, well, <laughs> we're going to buy one of those. Yeah, we appreciate a, a you. Or something like push your code a, a, a message so that we know where to pick it up. Maybe probably going to be on Amazon or something, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we'll we'll um, announce on Facebook also um when it'll release so we on facebook all the time but we'll yeah. definitely let, let everybody know when the release date is and when you can start pre-ordering and, and grabbing books now do you have is this true do you have like 117,000 followers on facebook um or, i think it's 121,000 <laughs> no something really. like that <laughs> from the last yeah. time i looked <laughs> Yeah. Uh, wow. Facebook will grow really fast for us and then um it'll slow down, but they keep moving. Yeah. So oh my it's, word. It's amazing the different platforms and you know the different stuff that people are oh, into depending on the platform. Some people just won't go to Facebook. Some yeah. people just won't come to YouTube. You yeah, know? True. yeah, yeah. We got 122,000, which is funny because I used to cry mm -hmm. to Andale all the time, like I don't know. I said Facebook don't like us. I don't know what I'm doing over there. I can't figure it out. And I'm not posting over there. And she was like, just don't give up. Just yeah. keep going. And I'm like, I'm tired of Facebook. Like, yeah. it's hard to talk to yourself. And on Facebook, we got to talk to ourselves yeah, a lot. We used to do our lives. And it'd be Nobody. Just <laughs> it's just us. Like, it's so weird. And all of a sudden, and that was a year ago. Yeah. We would talk to a ourselves. A year ago? Yes. Um, we have grown. We were at 1100 in no. October. Mm -hmm. October, we were at 1100. And today we sit at 122. What? It just blew up. Yeah. yeah. It, wow. it, it can happen. It can happen like that. Y'all y'all going to do that too. I know yeah. that. <laughs> yep. That's incredible. I am so, I don't want to keep you any longer than we promised and an hour has just gone by a few minutes ago. But you guys are such an inspiration. We love you. We just, ah, I, I'm so excited for you. And maybe one day we'll actually get to meet face to face. And we you will. can come to yeah. our island. Ooh. We love to. <laughs> I love islands as long as I can be in the back of a car or something more in a truck. Y'all ain't got no snakes out there. Y'all ain't candy. There ain't no snakes we out there. We don't have anything. <laughs> like oh, no alligators, no snakes. No. There's oh. grizzly bears across the way and moose and black bear, but nothing on our island. Oh, oh, okay. But see, when we go to Asaba, there are alligators and what are donkeys? I love the donkeys. We always <laughs> feed the there are pigs and alligators and snakes. Nothing and like that here. Lots and lots of them. Big, big alligators, like 
Big snakes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like in the back of the truck, like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think we're my own. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much for taking your time. Like, I'm just so excited that you've been able to come and have a wonderful weekend next weekend at your Soil Expo. It's going to be huge. I know it. And um, I'm excited to see how it all turns out. Yes. Thank you for inviting us. This was oh, yes. great. We're um, so happy for your success. Well done. Thank you so much. Talk well, to congratulations you to both of y'all on selling your companies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now you the work are. really begins. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Y'all have a good night. We love y'all. Bye bye. Love, love you.